Good evening, and thank you for joining us. The country singer appeared at the stadium early this evening, saying everything's still on cue. Texas News 5's Kathleen McDonald has more. The show will go on. That's the word from country music star Garth Brooks. My concern now that the injured um, reportedly are okay, my concern now is to uh, deal with those four loads of 65,000 people and make sure they walk out of here with the best show they've seen. Things didn't look so definite yesterday after a huge scaffold gave way, sending speakers and lights crashing to the ground. Fifteen people were injured, none seriously. Today, crews were making changes to the stage to make sure everything goes off without a hitch this week. They're tearing down the superstructure that fell yesterday, and they're just going to go with the minimum amount of, amount of lights and uh, speakers and stuff like that. As soon as it came down, everybody just started clapping, you know, because that the danger was out of the way then. So you guys feel safe now? Yeah, I'm a lot safer. I'm a lot safer. Workers say the new grid that holds the equipment will be much smaller and safer but it won't affect the show. The look's still gonna be the same, and I'll tell you, Garth will still be the same. As crews work to get preparations back on schedule, investigators are working to find some answers. They want to know why the structure collapsed and who, if anyone, is to blame. Meanwhile, Garth says he's just thankful. No one was seriously hurt. A wonderful thanks to God, and a wonderful thanks to the people in this building, the people that came here on the rescue team. The hands were phenomenal. I owe everybody. It's, it's a much better day today than yesterday. Kathleen McDonald, That's Texas News 5. Garth also said that he'll explain the new setup for the special effects during a tour Wednesday. Those effects include man-made wind, fire, and rain. Dallas police are searching for the suspect in the hit-and-run accident of an internationally known cycling coach. Texas News 5 Stephanie Boswell reports members of the cycling community are shocked over the death of Mary Jane Miji Rioc. Cyclists ride past a bouquet of roses near White Rock Lake. Closer to the lake, there is a white cross and more flowers. They're for cyclist coach Mary Jane Miji Rioc, who was killed during an early morning training session yesterday. Eyewitnesses say Mary Jane was riding in the street going about 18 miles an hour when the truck crossed into her lane, hit her head on, and threw her about 100 feet in to White Rock Lake. Dallas police investigators say the motorist never stopped. From what witnesses said, he traveled down the roadway a short ways and uh, somebody tried to, to stop and talk with him and ask him to stay, but for whatever reason, he decided to leave the scene of the accident. Riach died a short time later. She was known internationally and was profiled as one of the top four trainers in the latest issue of Bicycling Magazine. Cyclist trainer Brant Wyman described Rioc as a careful cyclist who always wore her helmet. But Wyman says because of crowded bike paths and roads, cycling around White Rock Lake can be dangerous. People want us to ride on the bike path, but believe it or not, the cyclists go as fast as the cars do. And it's uh, dangerous on the bike path for the cyclists and the runners. The law says cyclists and motorists should be treated equally on the road. But Wyman says both sides don't always obey the law, and accidents happen. Unfortunately, with this accident, the bicycling community lost a very talented coach. Stephanie Boswell, Texas News 5. And Dallas police are looking for a 1977 two-toned brown and tan Chevy pickup truck. Texas license tag number ESO912. Anyone with information about the case should contact Dallas police. And North Richland Hills police have found a van belonging to a woman who's been missing since early this week, but there's still no sign of her. 51-year-old Jerry Claire Phillips has been missing since Monday afternoon when she left her job at a grapevine car dealership for lunch. Relatives say they suspect foul play in Phillips' disappearance. Dallas police tonight have a little book that may make a lot of men uneasy. It's a little black book naming customers of what's believed to be one of the city's largest prostitution rings. Officers broke up that ring yesterday, arresting the alleged madam and 30 suspected call girls. Investigators say the group operated from the basement of a deep ellum lingerie shop. With the book in hand, detectives say they may now go after the customers. 
The former head of an AIDS agency in Texas is charged with felony theft tonight for allegedly stealing from that organization. David Petty was fired as executive director of the AIDS Coalition of Coastal Texas. He's accused of giving himself two unauthorized payroll advances. The agency provides rent and insurance subsidies, transportation, food, and other services to AIDS patients. A five-year-old British girl remains in critical condition tonight after a rare seven-organ transplant operation. A hospital spokeswoman in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania says Laura had a restful night and was more alert today. Laura received a new liver, stomach, pancreas, small and large intestines, and two kidneys in surgery Thursday. Princess Diana is among those who have contributed to Laura's care. And President Clinton took to the airwaves today to push health care reform. He used his weekly radio show to preview the health care plan he'll present to Congress Wednesday night. Mr. Clinton says he plans will keep what's right while fixing what's wrong. The plan will offer a standard set of benefits to all Americans by 1997. Have you seen this ad attacking the president's health care plan? You have to read the fine print to see who paid for it. The insurance industry. They've launched an ad blitz to stop the president's health care plan before he even announces it. After years of Television ads like this one hit the air today as the Clinton administration tries to win support for the health care plan. In addition to TV ads, several members of the Clinton camp, including First Lady Hillary, are touring the country pitching the plan at hospitals and clinics. President Clinton will also work the next few weeks to rally support for the North American Free Trade Agreement, but one person he won't convince is Dallas billionaire Ross Perot. Perot spoke out against the, the treaty at an anti-NAFTA rally in Lansing, Michigan today. Every single job in this country is important because that determines how that human being will live. And you can go right to our... Perot says millions of American jobs will be lost to Mexico in NAFTA. But another high-profile Texan disagrees with Perot. Governor Ann Richards says NAFTA will be a boost for the state's economy because it will reverse the flow of jobs across the border. The governor says she favors the free trade pact because it will help Texans sell goods in Mexico. And still ahead on Texas News 5, a sign of the times. Cooperation between the U.S. and Cuba means two suspected drug traffickers return to the U.S. We'll have that story. Also ahead tonight, some spectacular pictures from the Space Shuttle Discovery. Stay with us. Which 800 service keeps sales clicking? Well, if there's a problem, only AT&T guarantees to reroute your calls in less than a second. So you'll never miss a beat. One more reason to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. If 800 service is how you fish for sales, you should know AT&T's nearest competitor is twice as likely to have a network outage. And when that happens, you might not get as many bites. One of the 800 reasons to choose AT&T 800 service, the best in the business. Come on, David. Time to turn off the TV. Oh, Mom, do I have to? Remember our deal? Yeah, I guess so. Channel 5 encourages you to turn off the TV for an hour a day and read with your kids. Together, share a world full of adventure with swashbuckling pirates, visiting magical lands, fighting crime with superheroes, and much more. That's what Channel 5 calls remote control reading, and it's brought to you in part by Albertsons. In a world that's moving very fast, we can find balance in our days and in our diets with foods like Dan and Yogurt that put back what the world takes out of us. Dan and Yogurt, deliciously creamy, nutrient-dense, which means in very few calories we get a lot of nutrition. Calcium, potassium, real yogurt cultures, and the sense that there's a place in each day where we can find balance. Dan and Yogurt, a very healthy habit for life. The engineers of Mitsubishi check and recheck for even the slightest flaw. Because the truest measure of a luxury performance sedan is not only what it comes with, but also what it comes without. Lease a Diamante ES for just $500 down and $299 a month. Lease a Diamante now at your Dallas-Fort Worth area Mitsubishi Motors dealer. 
It was a bloody night in Mogadishu as mortar shells hit just outside one of the city's largest hospitals. 34 people were hurt in that attack. Four other shells also hit the UN compound, slightly wounding an American soldier. It's believed the attack was in revenge for a U.S. Army raid on a suspected staging area for militiamen of Mohammed Adib. And even though the U.N. has hammered out a ceasefire agreement, Muslim and Croats are exchanging gunfire. The town of Vitez was one of the hardest hit. A Muslim-led army attacked a number of Croat positions in the area. U.N. peace negotiators hope all sides in the fighting will sign the proposed agreement in Sarajevo Tuesday. Tonight, cooperation between the U.S. and Cuba in a drug operation signals a new chapter in relations between the two countries. Two suspected cocaine traffickers who fled to Cuba have been flown back to the United States. They arrived in Miami tonight after spending a month in Cuban custody. The two Cuban immigrants are expected to appear before federal magistrates on Monday. The pilot of an ultralight plane has a fractured spine tonight after a crash in Keller. It happened about 8.30 this morning near Johnson Road. Witnesses say the ultralight was circling just over the trees when it hit power lines and crashed onto a private road. Doctors say the pilot, 39-year-old John Vagey of North Richland Hills, has fractured vertebrae but no nerve damage. Investigators blame the crash on a rudder that stuck. Well, it was a light work day for the shuttle astronauts as they get ready for their last major job tomorrow. That's when they'll use the shuttle's robot arm to haul in the Orpheus telescope for repairs. But today, the crew is getting pictures of a phenomenon called shuttle glow. Now, that's an effect that creates a glowing tail from the telescope. The crew is also getting pictures of tropical storm Gert. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, if that were me, I wouldn't have film in the camera or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great day outside, uh, not too hot, not too cool. Maybe you can order up another one like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we can always put in a request. Scott says it's coming up next with the forecast.